A dramatic rise in opioid-related deaths is behind a new survey in Kingston. Between 2016 and 2020, drug-related deaths increased by 40 percent in the city. Residents are now being asked how they feel about decriminalizing drugs as a possible solution. For a closer look at the problem and what is being considered, we are joined by Carly Weeks, health reporter for The Globe and Mail. Good morning, Carly. Good morning. So what kind of questions is on this survey? So essentially, this is really asking people who live in that community about their perceptions, ideas, thoughts on this possible solution of decriminalization. So essentially saying to people, you know, how has this opioid crisis affected you? What do you think of some of these potential solutions? And basically trying to feel out the community, because as you can imagine, this idea of decriminalization, even though it's very much backed by evidence, um, it remains very controversial and in some cases uh, unpopular. So something that they're trying to just gauge the community on before they decide which way to go forward. You know, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions around decriminalization, what it will and it will not do. What's going to happen with the results from this survey, Carly? Yeah, they're going to take the results from this survey and then use that to determine whether they're going to go to Health Canada and say, we want to apply for an exemption to be able to decriminalize small amounts of drugs. So essentially, you know, the federal government um, has the power to override those laws that make these drugs illegal uh, if there is, you know, sort of that backing and that public will behind it as well. We've seen this program roll out in other Canadian cities, um, you know, to varying degrees of success so far. It's still pretty new everywhere. So I think that, you know, we, we're still gathering evidence and research but essentially that's what they're going to do so this is sort of step one in that multi-part process to getting this um to getting this uh, this policy off the ground you touched on this before this idea that decriminalization uh, and decriminalizing drugs has a lot of evidence behind it it is controversial it's still not fully understood in this country although practiced in others what kind of stigma is associated with it Oh, a, a lot of stigma, and and that's you know essentially why it remains unpopular. You know, the people who use drugs tend to be highly stigmatized. Um, they're seen as you know not even people that need to be taken care of. And so, you know, when you mention some of those death numbers uh, off the top, I mean, this is the opioid, opioid crisis, toxic drug crisis is a problem affecting the entire country with thousands of people dying every year. And I think the fact that we don't have that bigger policy um, answer in place does speak to the fact that a lot of people who use drugs remain very stigmatized. It's difficult for them to access help, to ask for help. A lot of drug users um, use in secret and a lot of them will end up dying alone as a result. And so this is sort of um, you know, an important project as well, just to kind of get um, public maybe education up to where it needs to be. To for, so you know, for those officials in Kingston doing the survey, um, you know, perhaps they're going to have a broader strategy in place as well to also educate the public as to why this potential solution is going to help. Because they're not just talking about decriminalizing drugs; they're also talking about you know providing people who are found to have small amounts of drugs with support and resources to help them. We like to ask the questions here at your morning that people at home are asking. So, Carly, I'll ask this of you. How does decriminalizing drugs reduce opioid deaths? Mm -hmm. Right. So, essentially, if you destigmatize it, so if someone is found with a small amount of drugs for personal use on themselves, they're not going to go to jail. They're not going to sort of, you know, have that black mark uh, anymore. And so it, what will then happen and what we've seen happen in other jurisdictions is that those individuals will be um, then sort of teamed up with community resources. So we found that you've had these drugs. Here's some resources to help you. Here's some education. Here's some help that you need. Do you need help with housing, with food? And so the whole idea is that you're bringing people inside the system and trying to help them as opposed to just punishing them. Um, that prohi prohibition, which we've seen obviously does not work because the drug crisis continues to worsen. Um, and that's really, you know, again, it to some people, it sounds counterintuitive. To some people, they believe in this idea of crime and punishment. But, you know, the facts bear out that it doesn't work and that this kind of policy is what we need, given the state of this toxic drug crisis. People in Kingston, Ontario, and across the country will be watching closely. Carly, thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.